The Pantsir S-1 missile system is a self-propelled surface-to-air missile system. It's designed to provide point air defense of military, industrial, and administrative installations against aircraft, helicopters, precision munitions, cruise missiles, and UAVs. Several of the Pantsir S-1 were provided by Russia to Assad regime. In May last year, Israeli Defense Forces released a video showing the destruction of a Syrian Pantsir S-1, which came as a big embarrassment for Russia. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes Russian decision to develop new Pantsir variant Pantsir SM after failure against Israel. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank or aircraft and three days of premium account. The Pantsir S1 is mobile and uses wheeled or track chassis. Its fire control system includes a target acquisition radar and dual waveband tracking radar that operates in the UHF and EHF waveband. Detection range is 36 kilometers, that's 22 miles, and tracking range is 28 kilometers, that's 17 miles, for a target with 2 square meters, that's 22 square feet, RCS. The system has a 360 degree coverage and both the sensors use passive electronically scanned array. There's also an infrared radar that's capable of detecting, acquiring, and tracking targets even in low visibility conditions. Pantsir S-1 is unique as it's the first version of the Pantsir family of air defense system that combines short to medium range surface to air missile and anti-aircraft artillery in a single platform. The surface to air missiles option is the 1257E6 or 57E6E two-stage solid fuel radio command guided missile. The missiles are arranged into two groups of six sealed, ready-to-launch container tubes on the turret. The missiles have a range of 20 kilometers or 12 miles, max speed of Mach 3.8, and carry a 20-kilogram high-explosive fragmentation warhead. Anti-aircraft artillery is the two dual 2A38M 30mm autocannon guns that are fitted with 700 rounds. The crew can choose the kind of ammunition depending on the nature of the target, which includes high explosive fragmentation or armor piercing rounds. The maximum rate of fire is 2,500 rounds per minute per gun. The cannon has a range of up to 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles. According to Israeli Defense Force, the decision to strike the Syrian Pantsir S-1 anti-air missile system was made after it opened fire on Israeli aircraft. IDF said in a statement, the installation attacked by Israel's Air Force fired missiles at Israeli aircraft to shoot them down. The IDF will continue to act against anyone who tries to harm the state of Israel and its inhabitants. The link to the footage is provided in the description below. At that time, many Russian experts have put forth many theories. Atek Bizhev, former deputy commander-in-chief of the Russian Air Force, told Russian Today that there could be two possible reasons for the failure of the Pantsir S-1 in protecting itself. One is that it had already used up its ammunition reserve. The other is that it was simply turned off. It wasn't battle-ready. He continued that there can be no third option, as it wouldn't have let itself be destroyed. When it's battle-ready, it performs constant surveillance of enemy aircraft and has a very fast reaction time. It would have brought down those cruise missiles with either its cannons or its own missiles. But these kind of explanations have been suspect, since the Pantsir S-1 was in a war zone tasked with the duty to protect the area from aerial threats. There's no excuse for having a weapon without ammunition in an active battlefield 
neither is there any excuse for having it turned off. As per some analysts, the Panzer S-1 was taken out by Israel's Harap drone. Harap, Harpy 2 kamikaze drone, can either be remotely piloted or set to automatically home in on radar emissions. It has a 70-pound explosive warhead. The Harap has a maximum speed of 115 miles per hour and can loiter over the battlefield for around six hours. The important aspect is that unlike cruise missiles or smart bombs, drones like Harap can return to the base or self-destruct and can loiter so they can strike at an opportune moment. Their slower flight profiles seem to make them hard to distinguish as a military target by systems like Panzer S-1. Viktor Murakovsky posted in his Facebook wall and made some startling disclosures. According to Viktor Morakovsky's post in Syria, it came to light that these Panzer S-1 anti-aircraft missile systems practically do not track low-speed and small-sized targets, which include drones, but at the same time regularly spotted big birds flying around the base, which is confusing for operators. Lenta.ru, which cited another Russian military expert, Alexei Klopatov, reported that within 24 hours, Murakovsky was forced to remove the post. Alexei Klopatov said, It appears that our weapons to journalists and experts can only be praises, clearly hinting about pressure from the Russian military. Viewers may note terrorist groups had launched drone attacks on Hamimim Air Base where the Russian fighter jets had carried out airstrikes against militants. As per reports, around 13 armed DIY drones, constructed with a simple engine, plywood, and small explosive, were used in this attack. Few unconfirmed accounts had claimed that some aircraft in the base suffered damages due to this attack, though the Russian military had denied it. The Panzer SM variant incorporates a multifunctional targeting station, increasing target detection range to 75 kilometers or 47 miles, and engagement range to 40 kilometers or 25 miles. The system also uses a new high-speed extended range missile, and existing Panzer systems can be upgraded to SM standard. It's fitted to a new 8x8 Kamaz truck chassis with an armored cab. Air Defense and Missile Defense Forces Deputy Commander Yuri Grekov said the Panzer SM showed its high efficiency against ultra-small targets. So basically, he's pointing towards small drones or quadcopter like Harap and recently developed Mini Harpy as well as other very crude DIY drones. Israel's Air Force has been able to carry out airstrikes in spite of many different kinds of air defenses available to Syrian forces. Israeli warplanes have launched hundreds of strikes on targets in Syria with more than 2,000 missiles. Till now, only one Israeli F-16 has been lost when it was shot down in February 2018 by Russian-made S-200 surface-to-air missile. Many observers have believed that Israel's Air Force has used special tactics like electronic jamming and weapons to carry out the strikes so that it was able to circumvent the air defense systems to this extent. This is probably true to a large degree, but it's also true that the Russian Panzer S-1 has been exposed badly and have inherent issues. Russian military equipment export is a major source of revenue for the nation, and Panzer S-1 incident resulted in a massive PR disaster. Panzer SM is a step towards having a system that will be able to neutralize the emerging threats and restore confidence in Russian systems, especially the air defense systems. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.